Welcome back to our final session of Motivational Monday right here at my house. Fairly soon, within the next few weeks, we'll be back at the Samson Domino Table Tennis Academy. So I look forward to seeing you at our upcoming classes, our upcoming summer camps, and our upcoming tournaments. We've got a lot of great camps happening in August, uh, three weeks full of camps. So make sure you check all those out on my website, samsondomino.com. We've got an exciting topic for our last topic today. And Fiona is going to be learning some things, and I hope you learn some things too. Our topic for today is understanding what you need to do, how to map out some um, a roadmap for your game, as far as what you should be practicing and how you should be practicing. So during the last 12 years, I've coached about a thousand players. This is with private lessons, group classes, camps, uh, weekend clinics, and a lot of other things. And one of the main questions that I ask people all the time is. What do you want to work on? What do you feel like you need help with in your game? What are your strengths and weaknesses? How would you like to design your program? See, for the students that I've coached hundreds and hundreds of times, I'm able to design their own training programs. But for a new student, I like to get feedback from them. What do you feel like you need to work on? So, we're going to start by asking Fiona. Fiona, if you were to design your own practice session right now, what kind of things do you think you would want to work on? You don't know. And that right there is the classic answer I get. People say, well, I don't know. I thought you were the coach. Maybe you should tell me. <laughs> All right. So I want you to think. I will give you about one minute while I talk to them about it. And then I want you to give me an answer as to what you think you should practice. Okay. So today, uh, we're going to actually write a scouting report on your game, your own game. So make sure you break out your tablet or break out a notebook and pen. We're going to take a lot of notes on your personal game. That's you right there, if you're wondering. I know, maybe it doesn't look quite like you, and you're laughing at my artwork right now. Sorry, I'm not the best of artists, but we're going to picture that as being you, and we're going to write out a scouting report on your game, imagining that you yourself are playing against yourself. So if you were playing against yourself, what do you think you'd be doing? Did you think of it yet? All right, what would you work on? Uh, more drills. More drills, like what kind of drills? You don't know? Okay, keep thinking about that. Game ones. Game like drills? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's good. Very good. Okay, so today, break out your notebook and pen, or you can uh, just take notes on your phone or your tablet. We're going to take some notes about your personal game. One of the best ways to know how to structure your practice is write up a scouting report. Imagine if you were writing this for your opponent and you could write every single detail on how to beat you. If you can start with a scouting report and you understand how to beat yourself, then you can also understand what you should be practicing. That's one of the things that I'm most passionate about is not just telling the students they have to practice more or focus more or practice harder or sweat more, but to tell them, hey, we need to really be able to map out a good game plan to know where we're going and know how to get there. And one of the best ways to do it is to take a picture of your own game in your mind and actually sit down for a few minutes and just ask yourself, how would I play against myself? How would I beat myself? All right, so a secret scouting report against yourself. We're going to first start off by writing down all your best serves or all the serves that you got. So Fiona, we're going to use you as an example. Give me one of your best serves that you've got. One of your nastiest deepest, darkest, secret serves that you pull out? Backhand. Backhand. What kind of backhand serve? Short, long, side spin, top spin? Side spin, long. Okay. So maybe one of your serves is long, backhand, side spin. Okay. So I want you to go ahead and list all the serves that you have as far as um, how good each serve is and what kind of variations that you have on each serve. So you may have to be able to actually continue this after the session is done, but I want you to just think through all your serves. What serves do you currently have? Which are your best ones? Which ones do you pull out the most? Okay. What about returns for Fiona? How do you oftentimes return serves? If they're long, loop it. Okay. Short, uh, loop it, or if they're like low and short. Okay. Short. Okay. What else would be better than spinners? Okay. All right, so Fiona says for her game personally, um, she likes to loop the long serves and she's pushing or flipping the short serves. So which one do you think is better? Do you think that you're better at looping long serves or do you think you're better at managing the short serves? Long serves? Okay, okay. So what do you think is better on the short one, the push or the flip? Flip. Flip, okay. 
So Fiona's thinking that, hey, I'm really, really strong when I'm looping those long serves. Flip is okay, but push is not quite so good. So while you're writing these things down, you can even give yourself a ranking on a scale of one to 10. 10 is absolute perfection, and one is absolute disaster. The next one, this is one of the most important ones, is the primary means or primary way to win points. So Fiona, if you had to say the number one, absolute number one, best way that you can win points, what would you say it is? Smashing. Smashing? Uh, forehand, backhand, behind the back? <laughs> Which way do you do it? Forehand. Forehand, okay. So Fiona's absolute strength is forehand smash. That's her absolute strength. Okay. This is really important. It's really great to be able to work through and fix your weak points, but it's also really important to be able to understand your strengths and how you can structure drills around your strengths. Good. Uh, common patterns. So what are some common patterns that you have, Fiona, as far as placing the ball here, pushing it here, flipping it here, looping it there? What are some common patterns that you have? Um, I don't know. You don't know. What about you? Do you know? Think through it. What are some common patterns that you like to do? Okay. For Samson, he likes to serve short top spin to the forehand and then follow it up with a quick loop. Okay. So I like to serve short top spin with hook or short top spin with reverse pendulum, short into the forehand. I like it when they flip and then I do a quick loop directly into the body. That's a pattern that I have that I like. So that's one that I need to continue developing and I need to think how can I structure my game around that particular pattern. Okay. What else is another pattern that I like to do? I like to do reverse back, uh, forehand pendulum serve with backspin deep into the backhand. Oftentimes the opponent will roll it up slow and then I can do a quick counter wide to either corner. Okay. So we'll call that deep Reverse to the backhand, followed up by a quick counter. Fiona just whispered to me that she's got one. What is it? <laughs> uh, serve a long to the backhand. Okay. And then they either loop it or block it. Okay. And then uh, if they loop it, I loop it back to okay. the forehand. Okay. And if they block it, I smash it. Okay, good. Now you see this one is a little bit more complex. It has a little bit more depth to it. So it may not just be a pattern like, well, just hit to their backhand and they're going to drop over dead. It may have some other elements to it. So why in the world are we talking about common patterns? Because if you understand your current common pattern that you have, you can understand how to set up those patterns better and then what other shots link to those patterns after that. So for example, if I, my main pattern is I like to set up the point that I can play my backhand out to the wide forehand, and the guy plays a side spin counter loop to my forehand, I'm gonna to have to be able to manage that ball afterwards. So as you have a better understanding of your own personal game, you can write up this scouting report for your own personal game, it then becomes much, 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 much easier for you to map out a game plan. Okay? We have a few more that we're gonna do, and then I'll be taking your questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type it in right there on the screen. And as I said earlier, this is our last session for Motivational Monday. This is your last chance to type in a question. So go ahead and type it in, and we're going to keep going here. I'm just going to fix my other camera. All right. So next one is end game tendencies. End game tendencies. At the end of the match, Fiona, when the score is EE or 9-9 or 10-9, match point for Noni the Pony, what kind of things do you do? Do you do anything different, or do you do pretty much the same thing? Pretty much the same thing? Okay. Do you ever do anything different? Uh, sometimes. Like what? Mm, maybe serve to a different spot or do a different serve. Okay. Okay. Good. So some of you may have some end game tendencies as far as a particular serve that you want to do or a particular return that you want to do. Some people have a little bit more confidence with forehand at the end of the game, maybe a little less confidence with backhand. So they'll set up the point differently to hopefully play more forehand at the end of the game. Or maybe they really like it when the opponent flips, but they feel like under pressure it's difficult to adjust to the flip. So maybe they would prefer at the end of the game if the opponent pushed. So they change their serve or they change the receive accordingly. So end game tactics or tendencies. Best wins. When I ask somebody or when I, when I think through 
who are your best wins? I don't mean, yeah, last year I beat some guy that was 1893, and this year my best win was against somebody who was 1467. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about rating, but your best wins, as far as your own um, record against different styles. So let's say, for example, you don't do well against short pips, blockers. Sorry. I should go right here. Okay? Maybe you do really well against lefty loopers, and you do really well against lobbers, and you really do well against people that serve long. And you don't do well against this and this and this and this. So if there's particular opponents that you do really well against and particular opponents that you don't really do really well against, you need to start thinking to yourself, is there a common theme here? Is there a reason why I do really well against these people and not so well against those people? As I said in the beginning, there's many different ways how to map out your practice. But as you understand what your personal style is, your personal tendencies, your personal game patterns, your best wins, your worst losses. Once you, once you start understanding this better, it's easy to map out a game plan. Our last thing is summary points. When you're forming tactics against a particular opponent, it's very important to be able to have some key summary points. Okay, So Fiona, if we were forming a game strategy or a game tactic against you, and that's you, we'll give you some blue eyes. Um, if we were going to form a game plan against you, what would be the top three main things we would have to do to beat you? Mm -hmm. Top three, return the serve. That's fast. Return your serve? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you would look out. We'll give them some eyes here. Okay. <laughs> look out for Fiona's long serve. Okay. Good. What else would we do if we were going to beat Fiona? What? Maybe we can keep it more to your backhand? Backhand control is good, but forehand's got a lot of power, so you have to think about that. What about your movement? Is your footwork amazing? Is it horrible? Is it intermediate? Okay. Your movement for the middle is pretty good, but the wider angles is not that good. So we can play Fiona a little bit wider angles. Okay. So it's really good in order to be able to have all kinds of details about your own game, on how you would beat yourself, how you'd uh, beat you if you were playing against you. But it's really important to be able to make two or three kind of final summary points that you really have to be able to focus on to remember. So, it's great that you have all this information written down about your own personal game. That's great. I like that. The next thing is, what do you do with it? What do you do with it is you take your current practice, whether it be practice with the robot, or practice with a training partner, or match play with a training partner, whatever. And you adjust your practice according to what you learned today. Hey, as I started thinking through my game, I realized that these are some deficiencies that I have. Hey, I realized that these are some stronger strengths that I really wasn't aware of. I didn't realize that I was winning that many points with my forehand smash, or my backhand flip, or my reverse pendulum serve, or whatever. So as you have kind of like these revelations in your mind as far as understanding your game better, you're going to be able to take that knowledge and change the way you practice. And that's what I really want for all of my students during lockdown is I want them while we're on lockdown right now to take, you know, a few minutes every day and just think deeply about their game. Think how they can train differently so that they can come back stronger when the academy opens back up. Fiona, do you have any questions? All right. We got about three more minutes today, and then we're going to be wrapping up. I'd love to take a couple questions from you. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type it in on the screen. All right, looks like we've got a couple questions here. Mrs. Megan says, Yay! I like that. Um, Chester says, Hi. Um, Heather says hi. Mrs. Megan says they really enjoyed doing them. 
Kenzie was writing out her main game plan. That's good. Sam Gacky says he has no sound. I'm sorry, Sam. If you had no sound, I am definitely going to repost this. And I'm also going to be posting it on my YouTube channel. So feel free to uh, go ahead and check out my YouTube channel. Sue says, how long and how often should we play with the robot? Great question, Sue. I recently uh, became a dealer for Power Pong Robots, as actually as of this morning. So you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, Power Pong Robot videos from me. It's a great robot. And for most of my students, they are practicing one hour, two hours, three hours a day at home with the robot. So when the academy opens back up, it's really good if you can play four or five days at the academy. But what about those days that you're at home? So if you're at home and you're not able to go to the academy, what would be better? Would it be better to do two hours of footwork with the robot or to watch Netflix? Definitely watching robot. So I recommend actually a mixture of both. When the club opens back up, you should be doing training at home, working on some specific details, and then application work at the academy. If you can do it, you know, while we're on lockdown, doing one hour or two hours or three hours a day with the robot is definitely not excessive. Just make sure that when you do have the chance, you are playing with people as well. Great question, Sue. All right, we've got about one more minute if anybody else has any questions. All right, guys. I just want to say thank you for watching and thanks to our official sponsors. Uh, Palo Palace, Nitaku, uh, Power Pong, Presper Financial Architects, and Red Roof, and Wilka Engineered Abrasive Solutions. I appreciate your guys' support. And as I said earlier, we are now sponsored by Power Pong. So if anybody is interested in getting a great table tennis robot, they have three models available. And if you get a robot, you get a month worth of free online lessons from me. So make sure you check out my website for more details. If you missed this session or you just caught us at the end, make sure that you check back to the, my Facebook page. I'm going to repost it as well as on my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay motivated, and stay equipped. Thanks.